Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm going to start with a couple of announcements. It's January, which means that our annual meeting is coming up. And the annual meeting will be on January 24th, Sunday, after worship. We um, are going to be doing something a little bit different. We will have an option to come and be in person, but we also are going to be holding that meeting on Zoom. And we are going to reach out to you and find out the way that you would like to attend the meeting, and we're going to help you get set up with everything that you need, and we're going to have a Zoom practice and ahead of time, and so we'll get that all set out. The reports are going to be emailed to you later today. If you would like one mailed to you, please contact us and we'll make sure that we get that in the snail mail to you. Um, our offering envelopes are going to be um, either mailed to you or delivered to your home. Um, I, I'm looking at my announcements now and I just want to make sure that I got everything. The annual meeting will be at 11 o'clock on January 24th. I'm just going to check. Did I cover everything? Okay. All right, good. We're good to go. We will begin our worship with an order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm today is 129. Often have they attacked me from my youth. Let Israel now say, often have they attacked me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. Those who plow, plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be like the grass on the housetops that withers before it grows up, with which reapers do not fill, fill their hands or binders of sheaves their arms, while those who pass by do not say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. The second reading comes from Acts chapters 19, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel for today is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. I don't think 
I know a person who doesn't enjoy being by the water. I know some people that don't enjoy being in the water, but I think all of us uh, appreciate the renewal that happens when we spend some time by a rushing river, by uh, an ocean, a lake. I mean, that's why so many people live in our area, right? Because of Geneva Lake. Um, I even like walking into a hotel lobby when there's like a cascading fountain in there and it just makes me feel like there's something about it. Water draws us. It doesn't matter what age we are. And if you spend a day by an expanse of water, most likely you're going to walk away renewed. Isn't that interesting? It's, why is that? And I have my little theory about that. You know, today we hear about the baptism of our Lord. In our first reading was taken from Genesis. When I was a kid, I always thought about the beginning of creation as there being nothingness. I think that's because in Sunday school, they always emphasize that God's creating is so amazing because God created out of nothing, which makes us imagine there was nothing. But if you listen closely to what Beth read, there was something. There was water. And God spoke over the water and the Spirit of God swept over the water or the wind of God, which also can be translated spirit. And then there was light. And God saw that it was good. My little theory about the water is that when we're near the water, it's something about it. It's like we're rocked like babies. Back to that pre-creation time when we were immersed in God's primordial love, when there was just not even an inkling in our imagination that we could be bad or not good enough. It's that, like that beginning thing, the creation thing. In water in the Bible, it shows up again and again. It's a theme. It's like God is always doing something at the water, which makes sense because God created everything at the water. So you think about the Bible stories, right? Think about different water Bible stories. I bet you can think a lot of them. Um, the flood and the water came crashing down. And the water in the Bible in the ancient world actually was a symbol of uh, danger and chaos. But God showed that God was God by taming it, by creating out of it, by reordering the world, by saving Noah and the animals and creating this new creation after the world had really... Um, deteriorated into something really evil and God recreated the children of Israel they passed through the water um, in the beginning of our service if you're watching I showed our altar cloth on the pulpit which shows the end of the whole story in Revelation where there is this river flowing from the throne of God where we receive new life so water it just shows up all the time in the Bible. So it is no wonder that the earthly ritual of entering the realm of God is a bath. We need to be reminded of whose we are, from where we came, this, this love of God that covers us completely. Jesus began his ministry in which God would create the world anew, Jesus begins it with baptism, with that same bath. And when he comes up out of the water, just like at creation, God speaks, you know, and Beth read, and God saw that it was good. And when God speaks, as Jesus comes up out of the water, there's that echo of creation, that declaration of goodness. You are my son, you are my beloved, in you, I am well pleased. Jesus was starting his ministry. He was setting off on his mission and his father was there. If you think about it, there are so many other ways that God the parent could have sent Jesus off on that mission. So many other messages that God the parent could have given Jesus. God could have said, well, you did pretty good, Jesus, but, you know, you could have hustled into that river a little bit better. Or, um, I don't know, think about the things parents say. Maybe if you wore your hair in a ponytail, you wouldn't have got that, that hair all over your face when you came out. Or, 
You know, everything you do is a reflection of me. Don't screw it up. God, the parent, could have started Jesus off on this ministry in, in such a different way, but that's not what God does. God declares Jesus' belovedness, his goodness, and it's with that declaration that God sets off on this mission. Jesus sets off on this mission to share God's love with the whole world, to renew it and to bring it new life. And that is the message of the waters. I think that we, it's not too far of an application for us to think about if we're parents ourselves, to take uh, heed of how God does this, this message of goodness. And it doesn't matter who we are. We need that mission of goodness in order to share God's love with the world. I've shared this story before, so you might have heard it, um, but it just really impacted me about, about how important it is to hear the message that we're good. I volunteered at an after-school program, and it was um, just after school. It was kind of like daycare for kids after school, and they'd get a snack, and they'd be there for an hour and a half. And um, there was one boy in the kindergarten room that just had the hardest time focusing. I think he probably had some attention problems, maybe had some things going on at home. And there was a nun who was in charge this one particular day. And not to say anything about nuns, I know some really amazing, loving, gentle nuns. But this nun, she fit the stereotype, if you know what I mean. Um, and this boy, he had had a hard day at school and he just had all this energy and he came into the room and picked up a pail of crayons and all of a sudden the crayons were rolling across the room all over the floor. And she was giving the kids snack. They were getting milk and banana bread and she said, the rest of the children are you going to eat while well, you pick up your mess. And I thought, oh no. Like normally that'd be like something we would say to a child, right? But I didn't know if this boy was capable because the crayons were everywhere and he didn't have the ability to have that kind of focus to do that kind of a job where the crayons were strewn across this whole room. And I'm watching him, watching him, and he's not getting started. And I thought he's never going to get a snack. It's probably part of the reason he did it in the first place because he was hungry. And then he did. He picked up one crayon and he put it in the bucket. And I said, good job. You keep that up and pretty soon you, the whole thing's going to be finished. And suddenly he was eagerly putting crayons in the bucket. And I was praising him. Good job. Look at you. Look at that. You're doing such a good job. And a few minutes later, almost all the crayons were picked up. And I said, look, you're almost done. What a good job. You're just doing so good. And then I'm helping the other kids and I turn around and he's going at it. There's like five crayons left on the floor, but they're not all getting in the bucket. And every time I turned around, the crayons were almost in the bucket, but not all of them. And I thought, what is going on? And I realized that when I had my back turned, he was taking a handful of crayons and flicking them across the floor so that he'd be able to still hear this praise. In that moment to him, to hear that he was good, it meant more to him than bread. And so he was gonna keep doing this um, because he just wanted to hear again and again a message he probably wasn't very used to hearing, just the basic message that you're doing a good job, you're good. We need that message. And it's not a self-help thing. It's not a frou-frou kind of new age thing. It is the love that we need if we are going to be sharing Jesus' love with the world. And it's really the message of our baptism. It's bringing us back to that primordial time when we were immersed in God's love and there wasn't even a thought in our mind that we could be bad or not good enough. Jesus began his ministry in those waters of approval and love by God. And he sanctified baptism for us. So those waters are the same thing for us. That through those waters joined with Christ, we hear God's declaration that you are my child. You are loved. And and I am pleased with you. Before you do a thing, I am pleased with you. As you go out into the world with your unique mission of sharing God's love, 
Remember those waters, God's creation waters, God's resurrection waters, God's redemption waters, the waters which Jesus entered and sanctified. And everything you do, let it come out of that place of love. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Each petition ends with the words, let us pray. The response is, have mercy, O God. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially those we know and love who are in need of your care, that God shower compassion, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. Merciful Savior, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we would be um, having our offering, our offering prayer. O God, Receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. In gathered by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. In the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.